People have asked me, what do I like about camping with a teardrop trailer? I actually wrote up a list of the 10 things that I could put my finger on that, uh, that we really like about this particular trailer and just teardrop trailers in general. These favorite things were very hard to put into order, but coming in in the number 10 spot is our 180 degree uh, awning. We use this awning at practically every campsite. Just having a covered area on one side of our of our trailer here, um, this will keep um, you know blowing debris from falling into our food. Um, it's an excellent uh, rain shelter. It creates a uh, 21 foot by about eight foot wide tent. We have a zip-in wall system, and it is fantastic when the weather turns really sour uh, to have that set up and to be able to sit underneath it have a little propane fire and uh, just a place to be out of the weather coming in at number nine is our lighting we tent camped we had portable lights you set up lanterns you know but this has um, instant lighting you can see what you're doing you can set up in the dark um, we did a lot of that with tent camping and it was very awkward. Lighting is just one of the things that is really nice to have. Uh, this is the, the way the galley is set up. It has an overhead um, light in the roof. It has um, lighting here. Did an upgrade, adjust the light level, and you can also adjust whether you're using a red or white light. At a touch control, you can see the white light is already attracting uh, a little moth here. We have the galley RGB system. One of the handy features about this RGB light control is it has uh, a couple of presets. These are the two that I use most often, either a, a white uh, work light or the uh, red easy on the eyes, attracts fewer bugs, but it has a full range of, of color spectrum to select from. We also added lights to our under the sink cabinet area. And there's one on each side. The cabin lighting is very nice. There are controls on either side of the cabin here, and it controls the, uh, the brightness. above each headboard. I've added lights to our lockers. Uh, they're motion detecting, real easy on batteries. I like those a lot. They're also removable, which is a handy feature if you just need a portable light. We have um, porch lights on either side. I've also added um, amber rock lights under the trailer and forward and rear facing work lights on the roof rack. I'm giving the number eight spot to the uh, exterior features. One of the features is this uh, flat, very sturdy, uh, fender. On this particular side, we often have a wash basin set up on top of that. On the other side, we use it for um, setting groceries or a small countertop. Um, you can set your shoes up there when you hop into the cabin. Um, the fenders are fantastic. You can stand up on them and service the, the things that you have up on the rooftop. And the rock slider has actually uh, done its job and protected the side of our trailer and this fender. The other thing that we found super useful for the uh, rock slider is when you sit on the mattress, you use that as a place to set your feet to take off your shoes and also to hang on to, to, to tuck your shoes uh, if you need to under the trailer or just um, you know give you a, another place to step when you're stepping up onto the fender. The next part of the exterior design that we really like is this um, tray. Super sturdy, 
um, but also lightweight. I've done a little bit of, of work and climbing underneath the trailer, so I know how it's built. And it's it's a great design. It's it's just what you need. It's not overbuilt. It's not underbuilt. It does a fantastic job. And we elected to have these um, side by side uh, lockers on our uh, meter bean. We're super happy with them. They are really nice to keep organized. To that, we also like you know the the battery and the electrical system is all you know right here. Uh, the spare tire easy to get to this is where we keep our little uh, toilet is underneath this cover it's a collapsible the way the tongue works is fantastic uh, this locking pin can come out and then the entire um, stinger of this hitch uh, slides right out and just leaves an empty tube and that's going to make it difficult to connect the trailer to a tow vehicle the roof rack, of course, is part of the exterior features that we really like. It was an option that we uh, didn't have to think twice about. The stabilizer jacks is not something that we often use to, to stabilize our bean like in the evening. But this is really nice to have. Uh, for one thing, you don't have to worry about uh, having a jack. Um, we do carry another jack, but you know, quite often this is going to be enough to lift, you know, one tire off the ground an inch or two if you need to check, you know, a, a brake or, or a bearing or what have you, change a flat tire. I think as long as you're on a, a flat, reasonably even surface, personally, I think it's fine. Coming in at number seven, I'm calling it the uh, utilities. We camped without uh, running water. We camped without uh, propane. We camped without uh, a power system uh, all the years of tent camping we we had of course we carried water we had some small bottles of propane and but it's just awesome having enough that you're not thinking you know we need to go fill up with water we're running out of propane the electrical system is just something you know, honestly we're almost to the point we take it for granted we don't think too much about it because it's always there it's always working occasionally we have to consider uh you know what kind of solar exposure we have um but we also have a dc dc charger upgraded the wiring in our tow vehicle so that our trailer battery is being charged while we tow thank you red arc for making this happen so the electrical system when we're plugged into shore power you know we have 110 we have always have the 12 volt here inside uh, usb ports I have upgraded the, the little um, USB here to a USB-C. I added a port here for our little home theater system. The electrical panel itself is tucked up underneath the cabinetry and you know it just works we also camp in the winter time and when it's brutal cold we like to camp where there's shore power and we simply um you know plug in an extension cord and um once you're once you're plugged in basically you have unlimited power um so we can run our um, heater that is on a thermostat we can run our freeze protection system so we don't have to worry about our our water system failing. It's something that we, we don't think about until there's a real need. And then all of a sudden you realize how important it is to have those kind of things on your trailer. We have a pump. We have um, 17 gallons of drinking water. There's a tank under the rear here of the trailer. And then we also have an additional seven gallons of utility water that we keep up on the roof and that warms itself um, during the sunshine. We use this tank for non-drinking water. We don't bother keeping it sanitized. Uh, we fill it from creeks and streams and lakes. That allows us to conserve our uh, fresh water, our drinking water. And coming in at number six is just this awesome galley. If you've tent camped, you probably are like us. Uh, you you would pull out you know boxes and containers and open things up. Pull out your little propane stove. Um, anyway, this is just set up like a little kitchen. And honestly, everything you need. We didn't have any trouble at all um, appreciating this um, awesome little kitchen. The uh, Ice Co JP40 
has been working just tremendously. Having refrigeration is just, I hate to say game changer, but that's what it was. Uh, we no longer are restricted by, you know, ice that's going to melt and we have to make another run to the nearest town. This thing just sips power. Long story short, that refrigerator is just awesome. And I can say the same thing about the Cook Partner stove. The thing just works, you know, beautifully. I know some people have damaged this, the little needle valve. If you turn these things off and you push them too hard, you'll damage that needle and you will lose all of your fine control. Um, the other tip is the burner here on this side for us, the one closest to the propane tank, um, has a little bit more um, pressure and seems to always have, you know, a more vigorous flame. So if we want to simmer, we always use this burner um, for simmering. But it's a great little cook stove and uh, easy to clean, easy to maintain. Again, it's another one of those things that, that Bean installs a high quality um, quick partner stove um, and they just work great. The other thing we really like about the uh, the setup of the bean kitchen, how these are open. Some people I know have modified, they've, they've put in shelves and drawers and things and, and I understand. We like this space left open. We keep our uh, portable power station, we keep that in here. Um, bigger items, the coffee pot, and then the utility items over here. We've added uh, lighting here in this cabinet also. That's another thing that um, the small things you can do to this, you know, already awesome trailer to upgrade it, to make it your own. I've seen people put little organizers on these cabinet doors. I mean, I think that's super cool. This is what works really well for us. Now for the cabinets. Um, these are great. Originally, Bean was using a magnetic um, closure for um, these sliders, you know, which actually works, but when you're off-roading and things are really whipping around, um, we've had these just come open and then everything comes out. So I just simply drill the hole here and have a little pin and it goes through the frame and both cabinets. And so uh, this cannot open. It's something that Bean has already addressed. So now uh, newer models, which is something else I just love about Bean. They're always looking for things that they can improve upon. So now um, there's actually a catch right here on both sides for the cabinets. Um, but the cabinets themselves, um, that's what it looks like. You can um, move things around. So if you wanted uh, more shelves, you can put the shelves in here. If you wanted more containers, these are uh, Trofast containers. There's something that you can buy online and add more. Um, they come in various um, sizes. We like having the one big one. It keeps all of our bigger um, cookware. And then we have um, shelves on this side. All of the containers here are related to um, the kitchen and cooking. We have uh, a shelf and a small container on the on the inside they're more for um, accessing from inside of the trailer i've modified this shelf so that it can be used as a as a pull out shelf on the inside and we set our heater on top of this shelf something else that's pretty cool about uh, the bean design is that if you pull out a couple of these or or one full-size one you find out that this cabinet will actually open up from the, the inside of the cabin and you can pass uh, your coffee through or um, you know just keep each other company when you're cooking. I've seen other people set up their bean their way. They'll have their clothing accessed from the cabin side. That's another thing that we really liked about bean, how much you get to customize your trailer. There's online software you, where you can configure your own trailer the way you want it. You can have the sink in the middle or the sink on the side. You know, there's just all kinds of different options you can choose from, uh, including, you know, the, the color and the pattern on the cabinets. A fantastic way to get on and shop. There's no pressure. You know, you get prices instantly as you are um, designing your own trailer. So you can kind of watch, you know, your pocketbook. Coming in at number five is the cabin design. 
So what can I say? It's very nice, super comfortable. Uh, the mattress is great, very lightweight. It folds up, turns into a little couch mode or folds up just so you can um, get it out the door and you know do some deep cleaning inside of the trailer you know we just are super happy with the mattress and i wouldn't change anything about it we spend very little time inside of our bean other than um, sacking out um, the only thing uh, we'll do is maybe turn in an hour early and look over maps make plans for the next morning occasionally we'll set our little home theater up here and a rolling screen drops down from these um, coat hooks. And uh, we'll sit back and watch drone footage or look at photographs that we took earlier that day at some of the awesome places that we visited. We have uh, cup holders on either side. We have this little caddy here to hang keys. Um, we set our phones in there and and plug them in up above so we're nice and fully charged in the morning. We have a uh, Max Deluxe air fan. It has a thermostat, a little remote control. Uh, the fan does an awesome job of circulating the air. We have cross ventilation with uh, windows that are fully screened on both sides of the trailer. A door on each side of the trailer that again, you know, these are are fully screened. You can you can open that door and leave the screen door closed. Um, you can latch it. We've never had an issue with any kind of bugs or rodents or anything like that. I've I read horror stories of people dealing with critters inside of their trailers, and honestly, I don't understand how they're not you know properly sealed from the underside. Um, I've spent some time under this trailer doing some modifications, putting in the uh, rock lights, and I can tell you that the underside uh, construction is fantastic. Um, there's, I have zero concerns about rodents ever finding their way into any part of our trailer. The cabinets here, again, they're accessible from the, uh, the cabin side, drawers that uh, we use. The attic space is really nice. This space here we use for some long, um, the tent poles, our theater screen. The inside is, uh, it has like a, a padded um, surface. The way that Bean insulates their trailers. I've, we've never had any condensation on the ceiling and rarely do we have anything at all on the walls. You know, occasionally we will get condensation on the aluminum uh, window or door frame on the, on the glass. Uh, but for the most part, you know, not enough moisture to, you know, barely fill a thimble. We just keep it ventilated, open the windows, you know, a, a couple of inches, um, and, you know, maybe open the, the, the rooftop vent. Running the fan on a number one or number two position is plenty for um, preventing any kind of condensation. In a hot climate, then we just open that and just, you know, turn it on high and, and just get the wind blowing through here. And we've never felt like we needed um, air conditioning. Um, but we're retired, so if we're camped someplace where the conditions are extremely hot, extremely humid, or, you know, horrible with uh, mosquitoes and whatnot, we just pack up and leave. A huge um, standout selling point for the bean trailers is this um, headroom. Uh, these are five foot tall walls. And you can see the arc of the uh, of the ceiling. You know, it's it's not like well, it's only you know tall right here. Uh, there's there's about this much more room in a bean trailer. In other words, most trailers the ceiling would be just about here. And we toured you know other manufacturers, and we we 
climbed in these trailers, you know, duck down into a little door hole and sit and feel like, you know, your head is just inches away from the ceiling. And I just, you know, my wife and I, neither one of us like that cramped feeling. And I also didn't like the idea of, you know, two people sleeping in here. We've slept in small tents like that. And, you know, the, the amount of uh, condensation from, you know, just breathing throughout the night. Um, it just is, you know, there's just less uh, cubic feet of air. And so, you know, that's another consideration. Anyway, um, something that was on my personal bucket list uh, was to have a, a trailer that was at least tall enough that I could stand up, even if I was hunched over, enough room that I could be inside the trailer and put on a pair of pants and not have to lay down and do some kind of squirming around. It's something that I think, you know, if you camp in a small tent and you realize, you know, that you have to climb out and it's raining and it's cold and it's windy or there's frost on the ground and you you feel like, you know, you're cramped trying to get dressed inside of this tent and your only other option is to stand out into the elements. And, you know, that's not fun either. It's another standout feature is this interior cabin. I feel like I've touched on some of this, but coming in at number four is the um, construction and design of the trailer. One of the outstanding features of all the bean trailers is this seamless fiberglass shell. This is one piece. It's molded in such a way, you know, that it sort of looks like maybe there's a, a, a connection here, but this is all one solid piece. Um, this molding is something that I added. I've, I've added um, power to the roof rack. Uh, the fiberglass construction um, reminds me a lot of the uh, sailboats that I built back in the 70s. I worked at uh, Clark Boat Factory. There's actually a, a humorous um, promotional video that shows the bean trailer used as a watercraft and actually upside down in the water, you know, going out in the lake. I got to uh, tour the factory and, you know, see this type of construction using composite uh, wall material. So behind this uh, fiberglass, there's actually, uh, it's uh, seven eighths of an inch, almost an inch thick of composite board that has a fiberglass strand running through it. So it's, it's something that won't rot. Um, it's very strong and super lightweight. And uh, it's also used for the floor. Let's crawl underneath the trailer here. So it's a little hard to see, but underneath a little coating of, of clay from the last trip that we took is a, uh, is a composite. It's not something that's going to dent. It's not something that's going to uh, corrode. It's, it's, you know, will last a lifetime. Um, so there's no plywood. There's no ply. They're, they're not building a plywood box and then putting, you know, sheet metal or something over the top of it. Um, this is not that kind of a trailer. You really get what you pay for. If you want to spend $20,000, you know, on a plywood box that is got sheet metal over it. I don't see the value in that personally. It's it, to me, it's, it's too big of an investment to, you know, buy something that doesn't have the longevity that you're going to get out of composites and out of fiberglass. So let's just do a quick comparison. What you guys do compared to the competition. So this is a stick and tin trainer. It's got seams everywhere you look and they cover them up with putty tape and some molding here and there. They all leak. When you least expect it, you go outside and your trailer's rotted out. That's what happened to this trailer. This is all water damage. This is the skin that covers it up. You can see where all the staples and everything are rotted out, letting water in on a regular basis. So out of sight, out of mind, in the spring, this is what you find in a typical trailer. Well, some of the construction elements and materials you know, are pretty obvious if you if you take a close look. This is not some kind of a, a stick-on wallpaper or something. This is a laminate. This is something that, again, it's going to last a lifetime. It's not something that's going to peel off or, or get scratched up. Now, some of the construction elements, you know, you can't see, but I've seen them. I've taken the bottom of this attic out so that I could do work on the electrical. And something that's underneath this just kind of blew me away. There's, there's struts like you'd find in aircraft and there's strips of aluminum. The infrastructure underneath this, 
you know, is like CNC carved. And I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous work. Those are things about the construction. They're not superficial. They, this is what keeps this um, little teardrop trailer, you know, it makes it rock solid. They're not using glue and staples and nails and things to put plywood together. It's just not that type of construction. Okay, you can see this, the welds, you know, the thickness of this steel, uh, not just this meaner beam, but there are other trailers. If you look at the construction and the welds and the, the size of the, the uh, tubing that they use for the frames, you know, this stuff is built stout. Another thing that I really like about this fiberglass and interior wall uh, construction is uh, it is not going to get dented. Uh, there's actually a, another kind of humorous video that uh, uh, Mark beats on this with some kind of a, a rubber, um, you know, sledgehammer. And I mean, it's, it's serious. He, it's not a joke. I mean, he is pounding on this thing and Okay, coming in at number three, I, I made a separate uh, category for this, and I just call it the shelter. Um, we camped so long in tents that uh, switching to this type of a, um, you know, bomb proof, uh, you know, bring on the lightning, the thunder, the storms, the hail. This trailer is just a, you know, bulletproof type shelter. Uh, it's miles away from anything that you'll ever get out of even the stoutest uh, rooftop tent or um, the pop-up type tent trailers because of the fiberglass shell and the other things that you've seen on this video. Um, this one is comfortable, safe, and secure shelter. Coming in at number two, is the mobility. Uh, once in a great while, we will come to, you know, the end of the road for the bean or the end of the road for our tow vehicle. Um, there's always going to be something that is impossible, impassable, and that's fine. Uh, but what we like about this is the fact that it is so mobile. Something else to add about the mobility, the brake system. This trailer has electric brakes. If you want to tow a teardrop or any trailer um, through all of the United States um, and your trailer is going to weigh more than a thousand pounds, you will have to have a trailer brake system in order to be legal. Beyond that, if you're going to tow this type of a, a trailer on a Forest Service or BLM roads, um, it's really important to have trailer brakes. Those roads are not highways. They are at extreme angles, if going down a steep incline with loose gravel and you don't have uh, trailer brakes, there's a good chance that your tow vehicle will overpower with its brakes and then your trailer will want to fishtail its way around from one side to the other or push your tow vehicle down the hill and it's not something that you want to risk. And the number one thing that I like about this trailer is how well it supports our freedom and our adventures outdoors. And we could keep it packed and ready to roll so that we could just take off and, and go camping at a moment's notice. That's the greatest thing about this. It goes where we like to go. It suits our camping style and we keep it packed and ready to roll. Mm -hmm.